Rica. Wait, sit, sit, sit. Wanna go for a walk? Tika, you wanna go for a walk? 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 Stop. 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 Okay, we'll go for a walk. Hey, hey, sorry. Hey folks, Marty up north. Today is April 1st, but this is not an April 1st joke. Uh, April 1st is actually the day that Dexter, my big dog, was born. So he's 13 years old today. And uh, in honor of that, I'm just going to redo a video, refresh a video that I did years ago on uh, hiking with dogs and um, just share some information from my 25 years of hiking with dogs. And uh, hopefully you find some of this useful. Uh, Tika, come here. Tika, not your... Tika. Tika, come here. Tika. It's going to be... Eh, we're doing this life. All right, Dexter, sit on your mat. Good boy. Good boy, Dexter. Dexter's 13 years old, so he's a bit of an old grand, which is 82 years old in human years for an older, a large breed of a dog. All right, Dexter is really good. Uh, Jasper is a whole other set of circumstances, but we'll, here, let's watch Tika. Okay, Tika, good girl. Sit. Look at her. She's already drooling. No, I didn't even ask. Sit. Tika, sit. Okay, up. Good girl. Sit. Tika will go through the whole routine without me uh, telling her to do it. So she's a little anxious because she knows that it's food. Give the paw. Good paw. Right paw. Good. Good. Down. Roll. All right. Good girl. Okay. So we got sort of everybody settled down. Now, uh, I've been hiking for um, 35 years. I got my first dog when I was 24 years old, which is about 26 years ago. Uh, that was a dog named Ozzy, and then after that I had Charlotte. Now I have Tika, Dexter, and little Jasper over here. And uh, I've been lucky because I've, I've actually been hiking in uh, Canada's national parks. I was hiking back in the days when we were allowed to bring dogs pretty much anywhere. So I'll put up a picture right now of uh, Ozzy and Charlotte up at uh, the summit of uh, Curator and looking down on Curator Lake on the skyline. So that's how lucky I was. All right, so if you're watching this video, you're either uh, thinking of hiking with a dog or I've hiked with a dog and you'd like to, like to learn a little bit more or, uh, and, and perhaps you already have a dog or you don't have one. But um, so th the first thing to consider when hiking with a dog is the breed. And I, you've seen in my video, so I take Tika on a lot of hikes. Now come here, Tika. Tika, come here. Tika, come here. So I like a dog. Come here, Tika. Sit down, please. I <laughs> All right. I like a dog the size of Tika. So Tika is a mix between a border collie and a blue tick coonhound. But um, so the importance of Tika is that she's about 60 pounds. She's very athletic. And uh, I like the fact that she has a short coat because it doesn't get uh, tangled up in a lot of things. And I, my experience, I've had many dogs over the years that have been about the size of Tika. All my dogs have been about the size of Tika except for Dexter. And so a 60 pound dog, I find it 50 to 60 pound is ideal. Uh, a dog can typically carry about uh, a quarter of their weight. So that means that Tika can carry, you know, uh, 15 pounds, which she never does. Dexter here. Um, when he was younger in his prime, he was about a 120 pound dog and I took him on a few short hikes, but I never took him on overnight hikes because what happens with a dog like Dexter is he just got tired. So a typical hike where I was doing 15, 20 kilometers a day, he got tired. Whereas Tika here has just absolute bundles of energy and she can go on forever. Now here, this is my daughter Sarah's dog. This is Luna. And Luna is about 11 pounds. Now, she, she's small, but believe it or not, you can actually take a dog even as small as Luna on a hike. I've seen lots of people do it. So, um, not my style, but it's possible. So, number one consideration is the type of dog, so I recommend you take an athletic dog. Now, um, the other thing about a dog, and, and this is not as critical, some people say that they need to have long hair, short hair, but Tika here is a short-haired dog, but believe me, 
She's been, uh, she does very well in, uh, in anything, you know, anything from the month of March, April onwards to September, October, Tika is fine outdoors. Now, the health of your dog is very important. So Tika here is uh, six years old. She has all her shots. So if you're gonna go out in the wilderness, you better make sure that your dogs have all their shots and are up to date. And one, one in particular is make sure they have their rabies shots. Um, and, uh, and, and whatever other shots the vet recommends. Now, one thing I like about Tika, I'll get her to roll over on her side, is check out her paws. So Tika is, uh, we live on an acreage, so Tika has very, not callous, but her paws, her pads are very strong. And um, a lot of dogs on the trail, this is one of the things that gets injured very frequently is their pads. And then the other thing about a dog, you can tell Tika is an outdoor dog, is her claws are, have been cut. So make sure their claws are uh, trimmed, they got all their shots, and, uh, and, and they're healthy. All right, so if you're gonna go on an overnight trip, the first thing you need with your dog after you've selected your dog is a pack. And I just wanna show, you know, uh, like, all, like hiking gear for humans, hiking gear for pets has evolved over the years. Now this is a very, very crude by today's standards uh, pack. Here's another one just like it. But believe it or not, both these packs were used on multi-day trips with dogs. Ozzy carried this one for uh, seven, eight day trips and Charlotte carried this one. But today, for, for Tika, I have a modern pack. So this is Tika's modern pack. And uh, let's actually, Tika, come here. Okay. And there's nothing in it, but here, Tika, come here. Turn around, my girl. Tika. So Tika's pack has a strap at the front, and then it has two belly straps. You can tell she's used to having this pack put on. So that's that's her pack, and then her pack has two uh, nice big deep pouches that'll hold. Uh, easily you know five six days of food and it's completely adjustable I'm not going to endorse different packs there's so many packs out there um, there's modern packs that have a solid webbing across the top here with a place to uh, to hook on this one here does have a an attachment for the leash um, I keep it fairly loose and um, but it, it is important that a good pack one of the things about a good pack is sometimes you do need to help your dog climb over some obstacles or climb up some hills and so you end up sometimes grabbing them by the pack so they need to be solid enough that you can uh, grab the dog by the pack oh that was pretty come on Wanda you show me how it's done too cool. Woohoo! you didn't even touch the log come here my girl. come here come on She's a little weird. I think it'd be easier if we were doing this outside. She doesn't know quite what to think of this today. But let's take it off. All right. Now, while we're on the subject of uh, things that attach to the dog, Tika, sit down. Tika, come here. Okay, we'll leave her there. Now, Tika right now is wearing a collar. Now, my recommendation when we go out into the wilderness is I bring her collar but I don't put it on her uh, until I'm in camp. So um, most of the time she's on leash while we're walking, but sometimes they can be off leash. And when dogs are off leash in the wilderness, a collar can become uh, a hazard, an, entang an entanglement. So that's just my, my, my advice. I don't put the collar on her while we're walking, but I put it back on her when, uh, when we're in camp at night. And of course I bring a leash. And again, I'm not gonna endorse uh, leashes. Uh, everybody has their preferred leash, but you do need a leash when you're out in the wilderness. Um, it's, it's a requirement, it's the law in most parks. If, uh, if you happen to be in an area on Crown Land in Canada where you can let your dog off leash, by all means, I mean, one of the great joys in life is to be outside with a dog and have a dog that can explore, but you need to be able to train your dog and make sure that your dog will obey your commands and come back to you because dogs can get themselves in a lot of trouble. Testing truck. Tika's nose. I put some food up ahead on the trail, see if she finds it real quick. Whoop. Uh, you, you'll, I'll, I'll hide, I'll, I'll, 
post a, a, a video here, you'll see a video of me talking about uh, Tika losing her pack. A as tight as I put these packs on my dogs, inevitably over the years, every dog that I own has managed to somehow or other separate themselves from the pack. Either they go over a branch or something that somehow mysteriously unclips a buckle and then the pack falls off. So, not happy right now. If you don't notice, I don't have a pack on because I turn around and all of a sudden I notice Tika didn't have her pack. So I drop mine and walk back a good kilometer, maybe half a kilometer to go find her pack. Oh well, one time it happened to Ozzy many years ago except I was on top of a mountain when he dropped it. Had to go back down. I was a lot harder. This wasn't so bad. Pleasures of hiking with a dog, I guess. Oh well, wasted 20 minutes. Now, one of the things I do with Tika's pack when we're hiking is I actually attach a bell on it like this. And that way when she's, it's, it, it's, it's for two reasons. If she's a bit ahead of me, she's making that extra noise. And, and it, it acts as it, a bell on a pack for a dog is the same reason I would carry a bell. It's that little extra noise might be uh, enough warning for a bear or some other animal that might be on the trail. But the other thing is in case your dog does, uh, if, if their dog is not walking on a leash and gets away from you, you can always find them quickly. So sometimes the grass gets tall out there. So a noise maker on the pack is a useful thing. What do you see? Hmm. Now, just like I do for myself, I ration Tika's food. Uh, this, as soon as I brought up the food, she licked her lips. So this is, now I increase her ration by 50%. So Tika eats two full cups every uh, meal. For the hike, I bring three cups. And so three cups for Tika, that's a day's worth of food. And I weighed it, this is nine ounces, about half a pound. So coming on a four or five day trip with me, I'd even add a, a spare ration. So, you know, Tika eats a half a pound of food a day. So a six day trip is three pounds. Well, three pounds, she weighs 60 pounds. If she carries a, uh, a, a, a quarter of her weight, which is 15 pounds, and trust me, she doesn't. So don't worry about your dog's ability to carry weight. They can carry weight quite easily. And, uh, and it's actually, if you bring in dry kibble like this, it's not that heavy. So for Tika, uh, I would throw a bunch of, and, and rationing is the same uh, reasoning as I do for myself, you know, one bag a day. And, and then the other thing I bring for Tika is I bring a bowl. Now, yeah, she's a dog. I could probably literally put the food on the ground or in my own bowl, but uh, a cheap plastic bowl like this. And, uh, and I bring that along. So her pack ends up having, you know, uh, food and her bowl and, uh, her leash goes in there if I'm not, if, uh, let me feed my girl too. Hungry? Hungry? Wait. Wait. So where do the dogs sleep? She could actually sleep right on the ground. I know that, but um, I'm again, I'm a nice guy. So what I do is on for her, for Tika, I bring her a foamy like this. This one's been cut just to, uh, to accommodate her. So that's all I'm bringing is a, is a foamy. Uh, Tika's a bit of, you know, Tika spends about half her days outdoors anyways on our acreage. So she's, she's quite, uh, capable of sleeping right directly on the ground but a foamy is a uh, is a nice touch and then when it gets a little bit colder um, I bring her a blanket now some manufacturers have started making uh, doggy quilts that are made out of down they even have doggy sleeping bags and things like that and again you know your dog better than I do but in the case of Tika uh, a foamy 
a blanket and uh, she's happy. She won't sleep under the awning, not when I'm there. She insists on being in the tent. I have a one-man tent and even in my one-man tent she crawls by my legs. She puts her head over my, uh, my legs. Uh, she's, uh, and if I give her a blanket she ends up rolling out of it. So she's just a warm sleeper. I'm lucky that way but it's a function of the dog that I chose. Not much room in the tent. Hey, my girl. We're going to bed early. Do a little bit of reading and then we're done. Doesn't matter. Not happy. Tika. Wants her own. She wants to sleep on my sleeping bag. Next time I'll bring a small roll for her. Make a difference. One of the things that's important while you're hiking is to stop frequently and check your dogs because dogs are extremely loyal, right? They won't, and they don't have a way of really letting you know when they're not feeling right. So you've got to uh, be able to detect problems with the dog. So I stop frequently, let them drink water. I don't carry water in my bag uh, for Tika. Uh, she can share mine, but Tika will drink out of any creek. So, and I won't, I don't treat her water or whatever. There's plenty of access to water, but if you feel that you need to bring clean water, well then bring clean water for your dog. But stop frequently, check the dog for, uh, in particular, the paws. It's very important to make sure that there's nothing that's been cut. Uh, check them over for scratches. And, um, and then in some places, I don't have to deal with this very often. I've never had a tick on Tika, but I check her for, you know, bites and things like that. But if you live in, a, in an area that has ticks, I guess you need to bring a tick removing tool. Now that said, this is my first aid kit from my backpack. I don't bring a specific first aid kit for Tika. I think that almost everything that I have in here could be used for Tika. Now if she pulls a muscle, I'm gonna have a hard way of knowing unless she's limping. If she's limping, I'll take her pack off and she can make her way out in an extreme circumstance. Uh, I might have to carry her, which is a problem because I don't have a specific dog carrier. I don't know anybody that does. I've been lucky. I've never had major problems with Tika. Nothing anyways that I can't solve uh, with just my first aid kit. The most problematic problem I've ever had with, with any of my dogs, these are porcupine quills. I don't know if anybody's ever... ever uh, These are, these are porcupine quills that were taken out of Ozzy's nose. So on a trip one time, Ozzy got uh, in an altercation with a porcupine and poor Ozzy had a nose full of quills. I managed to hold him down. You know, you wrap them in a blanket like this and squeeze them tight and I managed to pull some out. I know you're not supposed to do that, but when you're 20 kilometers away from the trailhead, sometimes you have to improvise. So I had to pull enough of them so that he could eat without bumping his nose. All right, so short video. Um, that's, that's all I have. Let me quickly recap. So hiking with a dog is one of the great, great treats in life. Uh, dogs have been our companions forever. So when you're going out uh, and you're thinking of uh, hiking with a dog, a couple of things. Consideration to the breed, I suggest finding a nice uh, 50 to 60 pound dog that's fairly athletic, you know, a collie, a lab or something like that. Not too big because they tend to tire out. Make sure your dog is in shape. So go for frequent walks around your neighborhood. Don't suddenly take your dog out on a 20 kilometer hike. You have to build them up to that. Uh, make sure they have all their shots, rabies, things like that. Buy yourself a pack. Don't, don't get too hung up on the, the type of pack. Get one, you can always buy another one. A dog can carry about 25% of their weight uh, on their back. I, you'll never get that high. Uh, bring their food in Ziploc bags. Bring a bowl, bring the leash, put a bell on there. Uh, um, bring some sort of uh, sleep surface, a blanket if you need to. Uh, rely on your existing medical kit that you're traveling with you and uh, and get out there with your dog and enjoy the uh, the pleasure the great joy that is hiking with a dog so hope you enjoyed this quick video uh, if you did um, hit the big subscribe button down below 
uh, give me a like and by all means provide some comments I love interacting with people and finding out what works and doesn't work for you uh, and, and your dogs so uh, this is Marty up north saying get off the beaten path well amazing how quick your mood can turn out here I was a little worried at first but now I'm in a really really good mood um, had a couple of smokies had a bowl of cup of soup and then now I'm boiling water and I'll make a big pot of tea and I went for a little walk so I found where uh, I think the trail is and it's it's not that big a deal anyways I mean I have a bivouac permit so I can pr this is a very very wild area I'm free to stay anywhere I want I had a plan to go 35 kilometers in a couple of days and then explore a valley called the Castlegar Valley and then come back out it's obviously not a trail that's taken very often so I might not get there but I'm gonna have fun exploring and uh, now I'm just gonna sit here I got my faithful companion Tika she's a good dog and I'm gonna have a tea and I'm just gonna contemplate life it just doesn't get any better than this I mean I gotta listen to this I got a stream going by listen totally amazing